Hi, y'all. So um, I'm going to do a review of um, chapters th four and five, which is nomenclature. Um, and oh, let me go up here and readjust. I got a new camera, so hopefully it is a little bit crisper and cleaner, but I got to get used to adjusting it. So nomenclature, um, R and S configuration, that's also called absolute configuration, um, Fisher projections, and um, Newman projections. And uh, I think those are the big things, um, relationships between molecules. So this, um, I'm doing this review because I tried to do this in class with my students today. And I felt like it didn't go very well, and so I have a lot of regrets about that, about the way that it went. And I want to, um, I want to try to sort of um, approach this from a different angle. So, um, and I think that angle will maybe be more helpful to my students from this semester, maybe to have a little bit more peace about the topic. Um, and to know a little bit more about what they need to new, do, but I think it'll also be helpful for our um, students in the future and students in other OCHEM classes. So I'm going to try a new approach, and I'm hoping that it will be a little bit more clear and easier for you to understand. So the first question, there are several mistakes in the name uh, given for the molecule below. What are those mistakes? Be sure to consider the naming and numbering of the parent chain, stereochemistry, naming and ordering of the substituents. So um, I'm actually, I'm going to follow this hint and just name the molecule properly first and then compare the differences. So um, the longest parent chain I can find, ooh, do I have a highlighter? The longest parent chain I can find is right here. Uh, that's the longest parent chain I see. If I break off anywhere else, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's not great. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can't find anything longer than eight. So um, this parent chain is octane. Okay, and for octane, um, uh, then I'm going to find my substituents. Do I have a different color marker? I bet I do. Okay. Uh, we have this alcohol, this methyl, this bromine, this methyl, and this fluorine. And then this alkene, even though it's part of the parent chain, is a substituent. So um, octane is a parent chain, and then my substituents are, um, and then I have to decide also, I forgot. The first thing is finding the parent chain. And then the second is numbering, finding and numbering the parent chain. And so I could start from this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But because that alcohol is there, I don't have to start from that side. Uh, or I have to start from that side. I can't start. The other option would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's not the right side to start from because um, this alcohol is a higher priority. And when I say higher priority, I'm not talking about the con angled prelog that you learned for assigning RNS. I'm talking about the nomenclature priority that says that. Um, that alcohols are the most important or one of the most important groups that we've learned so far. There's more other important ones, but we haven't learned them yet. And then after alcohols, we have um, alkenes and then alkynes. And then we have alkanes and halides, and they're the same priority. But because there's this high priority alcohol group, we have to give that alcohol the lowest number that we possibly can. So I'm gonna start uh, numbering on this side and then I'm just gonna give all these substituents. So we have one, uh, no, we have two all for that two alcohol, three methyl, five bromo, six fluoro, and six methyl, and then seven ene. 
So these two are um, substituents. Oh, sorry, those two are suffixes, so they'll go at the end. So I'm just going to work on these ones that go at the beginning. And we have to do them in alphabetical order, so uh, B, then F, then M. So uh, let's see. Okay. So that should be, oh wait, I think that's four Bromo, sorry. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I also looked at that five. Four Bromo, did I get the other ones right? Yeah, six, yeah, and seven, okay. So four Bromo, and then the next is Fluoro, so six Fluoro. Four Bromo, six Fluoro, and then we have three, six, and that's something that students get wrong a lot is um, they don't put both. If you have a dimethyl di substituent, they just put one or the other, but you have to write three and six, both places, um, or even if they were both on three, you'd have to put three, three, dimethyl. And then, um, then we uh, get to the parent chain, so dimethyl octane. Okay, but it's not octane because it's got a, a double bond here. So it's actually oct seven en, and we drop the e because then it's going to be two all. So if um, if you don't remember the names for alcohols, if it's octane, we drop the e and we get octanol, and you have to say where it's present. If you have um, octene, you still drop the E and make it octenol. So that's what this is, octenol. The OL has to come last. So it would be oct, and then you say where the E is, and then uh, where the uh, alcohol is. Now, uh, if you technically did methyl and then, uh, you know, seven octene, and then two all, that's also technically right by a UPAC standards. I don't know what, uh, for my students, this, either one of those is fine because either one of these is right. Oh, I forgot to put en, oct seven en, two all. So either this one or this one is right according to IUPAC, but you have to know what your professor wants if you're, if other students are paying attention to this. Okay, um, so now, I'm going to go to the next question, and this is the one that I feel like didn't go super well. So this is where I want to kind of focus my time, and I think what I realized is that students maybe don't have um, the best understanding of one, assigning R and S configuration. I'm going to do a quick overview of that, but two, um, of even what Fisher projections look like. So um, let's just start with a reminder of what Fisher projections are sort of trying to do, um, and then how to assign R and S configuration. So Fisher projections are typically drawn, um, I'm gonna get a fresh page and do a review of Fisher projections. Review of Fisher projections. So um, Fisher projections are typically drawn like this, um, but they're implying that the vertical positions are going away from you. These are sort of flat, and then um, these horizontal positions are like this. And some professors don't actually make you learn this, uh, the reason I think is important is actually a lot of sugars and stuff and biochem is done in terms of Fisher projection. So where it's flat and they assume, you know, what the stereochemistry is on that. And so I want to, um, I guess, prepare you to the best of my ability for that. Um, and so what that model molecule actually looks like is, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to build here what a Fisher projection would look like. Um, on my modeling kit. So what a Fisher projection really technically looks like is having um, uh, 
it looks sort of like this. You're looking at a sawhorse. So normally you're used to seeing, I guess, sawhorse kind of like this. Here, I'll put it on, I'll use green. Okay, so you're used to seeing sawhorse like this, where you have your carbon chain like this. And you should have, if you have your carbon chain um, on the carbons that are sort of pointed up, you should also have a dash up and a wedge up. And then over here on the um, carbon that's pointed down, you should have a dash down and a wedge down. So right now I have green, I'll put a G for green and, um, no wait, H, uh, I'll put W for white and G for green. And here I'll put G for green and W for white. Okay, so this is what you're used to seeing. And I have noticed some students will, uh, when they're drawing their bond line, they do something like this and then the dash pointed down, but that's not technically accurate. And I think it can mess up your R and S configuration. So be sure that wherever, if your carbon is pointed up, your wedges are also pointed up. Okay, so this is what you're used to seeing. So this is sawhorse. Now Fisher, just to remind you, is um, viewing the molecule where we've rotated from, from sawhorse to look like this. So this carbon on the left is unchanged and white's still coming out at you and green's going into the page. But now this one on the right, the green one when it was pointed down, that was coming out at you. But I've now rotated that to where it's pointed away. And all three of these are in the plane of the page. And now the white is also coming towards me and the green is going away. So I've heard some people talk about like, oh, I always do wedges on the left and dashes on the right. But you really can't just go based on that. You have to go based on um, really visualizing the molecule. So, um, and then Fisher projections is taking this molecule and then viewing it from the top. So if you take this molecule and you view it from the top, these are going away from you. The plane of the page is uh, right here on these two carbons that are uh, the two main carbons. These two bonds are going away from you and these two are coming towards you. So that's what we're drawing in Fisher projection, green, green, white, white. So this, uh, let's do green, green, white, white. The CH3s there are just the carbons. The black ones are the carbon. This and this and this and this are all different representations of the same molecule. Now it's okay if you're having a hard time going from this, you know, from Fisher to the bond line. There are other ways to approach it and that's what I want to show you. But I guess I just want to remind you about what Fisher projections are and what Newman projections are. So that's a review of Fisher projection, or sorry, of this is called sawhorse, sometimes it's called bond uh, line with the wedge and dash on there. Either one of those is correct. So just wanted to remind you about that representation. So then next I'm going to do a review of assigning R and S configuration or absolute configuration. So um, if we have a molecule like this, um, I'm going to put it back to how we normally see it in bond line. And I'm actually going to change out one of these for a red. So this molecule right here is um, one, two, three, four carbons. So that's butane. Then we have, uh, I'm going to make this chlorine, uh, green pointed towards us chlorine, and this alcohol pointed away from us, or this red pointed away from us alcohol. So if I want to sign the configuration of these, the first step is to give priority. And when you're looking at priority, you're never adding up everything. You're only looking at the atoms directly attached. And if the atoms directly attached are the same, you keep going on down the line. And I'll give examples of that later. But um, for right now, 
I'm just going to say the atoms directly attached. You're not looking at the whole chain, just the atoms directly attached to the chiral center. So, um, and that's based on weight by the con ingold prelog priority, not based on the priority we talked about with nomenclature. Okay. So, um, let's start. Oh, step one is to give priority. Step two is to move the lowest priority. So priority four away from you. And there's tricks to do that if, if it's not already pointing away from you, but that's the basic way. So if you're having trouble, you need to start with that. So this should be pointing away from you. And then step three is to connect. Connect one priority, then two priority, then three priority in that order. And if you're going clockwise, um, that would be R, and uh, one of my PLT leaders was like, oh, yeah, I go clockwise when I write the letter R. So that can be a helpful tip to remember. I remember that if I'm going right at the top of the molecule, um, like if I'm circling it at the top of the circle, if it's going right, then it's R. Now, if I'm circling it and it's going to the left, if uh, I connect one, two, and three in that order, then it's S. And also my uh, PLTL leader said, oh, when I do S, the initial movement of my pin is counterclockwise. So that can help you. So counterclockwise is S. So that's how you can remember. Um, okay, so that is how you assign priority, these three steps. So if we're assigning priority here, um, priority one based on weight is chlorine is the heaviest. And then we have two carbons. So that's what I mean when I say if two atoms are different, then we look at what they're attached to. Keep going on down the chain of carbon. So this carbon is attached to an oxygen, but this carbon is only attached to hydrogen. So oxygen outweighs the carbon. So this is priority two. And then CH3 is priority three. So we connect these in order and it's going to the right. Um, but before I confirm that, I have to make sure that the hydrogen is pointing away from me. That's step two. So um, in this case, we have an implied hydrogen. And if the chlorine is pointing towards us, the carbon and the other carbon are in the plane of the page. The only option is for the hydrogen to be going into the page. So the implied hydrogen exists there on the dash. So it is pointing away from us. So this is the right answer. It's R. Now on the second molecule, right, or the second chiral center right here, um, we have oxygen being the highest priority, and then uh, we have two carbons. And this carbon here is um, attached to chlorine, while this one is just attached to hydrogen. So this is carbon two, and then this is carbon three. So I'm going to connect these all, and this would also, you'd initially think it's R, but if we're checking our hydrogens, um, there is an implied hydrogen right here, and if the alcohol is going away from us, then the implied hydrogen right here is on the dash, and it's coming towards us. So that's bad. So you can do one of two things. You can either flip the whole molecule over. So if I flip this whole molecule over, then it looks like this with the wedge coming towards me on the OH and the chlorines now going into the page. I can reassign my priorities where alcohol is one, this carbon is two, and this is three, and that's going counterclockwise, so that's S. Um, and the hydrogen is pointed away from me in the plane of the page right here when I flip the molecule over, but you have to flip the whole thing over. Um, alternatively, something I tend to do is if the hydrogen is pointing straight at you, it doesn't work if it's in the plane of the page, but if it's pointing straight at you, you can know that our configuration must be the inverse, and so you can convert it to S. That's one approach. You can invert it. Another is to flip the whole molecule. A third option is to rotate the molecule. So um, if we have chlorine here and alcohol here and hydrogen on the wedge, we can rotate it so that the hydrogen would be pointing away, but you have to rotate all three things. So the hydrogen would go back. Um, I'm going to show you the rotation. 
the hydrogen were rotating back, and that means this methyl group is coming down to the wedge and the alcohol is going up into the plane of the page. So uh, we get our alcohol on the plane of the page, our methyl group right here, and our um, hydrogen going into the plane of the page. Now we can rewrite our priorities. They haven't changed. Alcohol is one, this group is two, and this methyl is three. So this is S configuration. So these are three different ways you can approach this problem to assign R and S configuration that I think will be helpful for you. Okay, so that's how to assign R and S configuration in Sawhorse. Now I want to go over how to assign R and S configuration in Fisher. So um, I'm going to take this same molecule. And remember, in Fisher projection, um, we're looking at the molecule like this. So we need to have our um, carbons lined up in the chain here. So we have CH3 here, CH3 here, and each of these is also a carbon. And remember, these are on the dash. So they're going away from you. Um, you're not really supposed to draw these in, but I guess you can if it really helps you. It's just extra work. And you need to know, um, like, for projections on your exam and stuff, you shouldn't be drawing necessarily these in. But you need to know, if you see it like this, you need to know that, you know, we're assuming that the verticals are dashes and the side to sides are wedges. Okay, so we have our hydrogen here and we have our chlorine here and our alcohol here. Okay, so um, this is the same molecule as I did before. So um, our priorities are the same. Chlorine is number one. This carbon is number two and this carbon is number three. And I saw a lot of students struggling here like they would forget that this carbon uh, existed and they would just only look at these three but this is another carbon down here so you have to consider that so if that's a mistake you're making be sure to check for that um so right now i have my our priorities assigned and then hydrogen is four but remember we have to check to make sure hydrogen is pointing away from us and right now it's not so the thing that we can do is rotate this molecule and so here, this is what we currently have, but hydrogen is not pointing away from us, so we can rotate the molecule. Note the bottom one didn't change, just the top one. And so we can put our hydrogen going straight away from us, our chlorine moved over here, and our CH3 came down to this side. The bottom molecule didn't change at all. So uh, this is OH, and this is H. Okay. So the bottom part of the molecule, the bottom atom, the bottom chiral center. Sorry, I often say molecule when I mean chiral center, but um, the bottom part of the molecule didn't change. And neither did our priorities. So this is priority one still. This is still priority two. And this is priority three. So now we connect one, two, and three. We can kind of just ignore four. We're not trying to connect four. And it's going to the right. So this is our configuration. Now, another option you can do on this molecule, just like we talked about before, um, if you just know that this hydrogen is pointing towards you and it's not supposed to uh, for assigning priority, you can just connect one, two, and three on this molecule and you get S. Uh, on this arrangement of the molecule, but because the hydrogen is pointing towards you, uh, it's not supposed to, so it's R. So that's kind of a tricky thing that you need to be careful about. Um, if you're not sure what I just did or you're worried about the details, stick with the first method where you rotate. Um, and then another way that sometimes people do is they'll just interchange two groups, like they'll almost just break the bond, um, where like you move this hydrogen to here um, and CH3 to there, so the hydrogen's pointing away, and they know that that will give them the opposite enantiomer. That's a little bit confusing for me, so I don't recommend that way, but if that way makes sense to you, if you've learned that somewhere else and you're consistently getting the right answers, that's fine. Okay, so that is how to assign R and S configuration on a Fisher projection. 
just for a little more practice, I'm going to do it on this bottom one too. So this would be one, two, and three. So one, two, three, that is going to the right. So that's our configuration, but sorry, our configuration, but the hydrogen is pointing towards me because it's on the horizontal. So um, we should flip it to be S. And sort of my method for that, you'll notice that I circle the final answer is I will connect one, two, and three, and then I check to see if hydrogen's pointing directly towards me or away from me. And if it's pointing directly towards me, then that's the right answer. So that's like what I, or sorry, if I, it's pointing directly away from me, like here, then that's the right answer and I'll circle it. But here I connected the three and then realized that hydrogen was pointing towards me. So it needs to be flipped. So that's S. So then I circled that answer. So I don't circle the answer until I'm 100% sure that that's correct. But technically you should probably rotate the hydrogen first. It's, that's the more proper way, but either way is fine. Okay, so all of that review to get us to um, this question. So I think I wish I had done maybe some simpler examples first here to prepare you for the exam, but I was trying to um, like, I guess I thought that we'd kind of already covered those, so you didn't need a review on that, but that was my mistake and I'm really sorry. So I'm going to change this up. And for right now, I want you to not pay attention to B and not pay attention to C. And we're just going to start with molecules A, D, and molecules. <laughs> Questions A, D, and E. And I'm going to show you my approach to this. So you could do a few different things. The, the question is asking you to um, draw the Fisher projection of 2R, 3R, 2, 3 dibromobutane with the lowest priority groups at the vertical position. So my approach to this first is not to care about assigning R at first or even it being in the lowest priority groups at the vertical position. First, I'm just gonna draw butane so I have a carbon here, I'll write it in for you, a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here. So those are my four carbons. So this is butane. This is carbon one, this is carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four. Now I'm gonna write in bromo. So I have a bromo on carbon two and a bromo on carbon three. If it's easier for you to picture, you know, one, two, three, four, and we have a bromo here and a bromo here, these are two representations of the same molecule, basically, but that doesn't have any stereochemistry. Okay, and if this is a carbon with one bromo and it, uh, part of the carbon chain, it has an implied hydrogen right there, right? So we have to draw in our implied hydrogens as well. So this is 2,3-dibromobutane. Now, personally, at this stage, I do not know if this is R or S configuration. I just drew it. So um, in a different color pen that's hopefully lighter, I have a little pink one around here. Okay, I'm going to assign priority. Uh, so it'll be different color writing. So my bromine will be one because bromine's the heaviest. And then the four things attached, like I said, I saw students make this mistake a lot where they would like forget that this is part of it, but this is still part of it. <laughs> so this is another carbon you have to consider for the four groups attached. So this carbon and this carbon are competing for second place. Between these two, this has three hydrogens, but this, only, this has a bromine. So the bromine beats the hydrogen. So this is priority two. And then this is priority three, and hydrogen is priority four. But priority four doesn't matter, so I'm going to write it kind of off to the side. Um, so uh, you can do one of two things now before you assign R or S configuration. I would, personally, the way I tend to do it, because it's less work, I connect these three, but because hydrogen is pointing towards me, I take the opposite enantiomer. But... 
In this case, they asked us for the lowest priority groups to be at the vertical position. And when I say they, I mean I, because I wrote this. And the reason I asked for that is because it's easier to assign Newman, uh, sorry, to assign absolute configuration that way, number one. But number two, uh, in grading for your exam, it's easier for the grader to have um, everybody's lined up the same way. So I rotated this molecule now, so the hydrogen is on the straight up and down, which means it's on the vertical here, pushing away. Um, and then this CH3 and this bromine are, would be coming towards us. So um, now we can assign the proper configuration. So this is one, nope, bromine is one, this carbon is two, and CH3 is three, and hydrogen's pointing away from us, so this is S configuration. Now, if you can, if you like my other method, the other thing you would have been done is connect one, two, and three. You would have been going to the right, but because hydrogen is coming towards you, you take the opposite, and that's S. So this is also S configuration. Okay, all we did was rotate it. We did not invert it. We just rotated it. So this is S, and now let's do the bottom one. But again, this hydrogen that's the lowest priority is pointing... Um, is pointing towards me and we don't want that so I'm going to rotate it. So we have CH3, H, Br and then down here we have Br because it went over there, hydrogen here and CH3 over here. Okay so this is um, S configuration. We already figured it out. This is just three different ways of writing the same molecule. And then down here, our bromine is priority one. This carbon right here is priority two. And then this is priority three. The hydrogen's pointing away from me. So this is R configuration. So right here, what I have is SR configuration. Well, SR configuration is not what the question asked. The question asked for RR. So I know that if I invert this um, top carbon, if I take the mirror image of it, it becomes S configuration. Sorry, it goes from S to R configuration. And this bottom carbon is already R configuration. So I'm going to leave the bottom carbon the same, and I flipped the top carbon. So this, I know, is R because we already assigned it. This is carbon, or this has the highest priority, then two, then three is R. Now this is the mirror image, so just to double check, I'll, um, I'll do this with you just to double check. This would be the highest priority, then this would be two, and this would be three. Uh, so now we know for sure that these are both our configuration. Now if this was your exam, and I am very likely to have questions like this on my free response, I would request that you, um, I would give you enough page to do all this, but I would request that you rewrite the correct answer very clearly to make it easier for grading. So this is my right answer of, um, I'm just rewriting this molecule up here, of RR. Um, this is RR2 bromo. This is R 2R3R23 dibromobutane. So this is my answer for A. Okay, so the next question is to draw an enantiomer and a diastereomer of the molecule. So let's answer this for D. Draw an enantiomer and a diastereomer of this molecule. So an enantiomer of this molecule is actually pretty easy because we just um, pretend that this is a mirror and we're doing the mirror image of it. Br, CH3, H, and then down here we have CH3BRH. So you um, will just have to trust me that if this is RR, this is SS. Actually, you don't have to trust me. Go ahead, you can pause this, write this out on your own, and double check your work and make sure that this is really an enantiomer. And we know this is an enantiomer because I guess I should um, go back and do a quick review on this as well. 
Um, and I have a whole video that's like 20 minutes it's going over these so I'm just gonna do it really quickly right now but for isomers you have two different types of isomers you have a constitutional isomers which are like well isomers in general are the same number of each atom same number of each atom so if you have you know five carbons and um, 12 hydrogens, like we would have in this molecule. That and this, um, these are, they're both five carbons, they're both 12 hydrogens, but they're not the same molecule. And in fact, this one is called um, pentane. And this one is called two methyl butane. So they have totally different names. Now on the other side, so I call these um, structural, structural isomers. On the other side, we have spatial isomers. So spatial isomers are, they uh, still have the same number of each atom. Uh, they're stereoisomers, uh, but they're just arranged differently in space. And so there's two types of these, okay? One that you've seen a lot and you're most familiar with are uh, cis trans. Uh, stereoisomers. So, um, and what's interesting about these is they would have the same base IUPAC name. So this would be um, one, two, this would be two butene for both of these. One, two, three, four. Both of these have one, two, three, four carbon. So they're butane, but their double bond is at position two. So it's two butene. But these are different molecules and they have different polarities, um, they have different uh, intermolecular forces, they react, they interact differently. So because of that, we have to um, give a different name to these. They're not the same molecule, even though their base name is the same. So you would have to either say cis or trans to butene. So this is cis, that's trans. That would be trans. This one is cis. So um, this is one type of stereoisomer. Another place you've seen cis-trans stereoisomers is on rings because um, they, they're kind of locked in position. They can't rotate in the same way. So if you have two groups that are on opposite sides or the same side, there's hydrogen here. You've seen cis-trans isomers on rings where, oh, I'm meant to do this to be where this is the cis version, if there's two wedges, or if your uh, substituents, one's on a wedge, one's on a dash, this is a trans version. So there's cis and trans options, okay? Um, so all these are one type of stereoisomer called diastereomers. The other type of stereoisomer is enantiomers. So enantiomers are like your hands, they're mirror images that are not superimposable. And um, if you have one chiral center, you, the molecule is definitely going to be chiral. One chiral center, the molecule is chiral, and therefore there will be two stereoisomers uh, of that that are enantiomers. So the relationship between the molecules is what this word enantiomer describes. So if I'm using my hands as an example, um, my hands are chiral. They have a mirror image that's not superimposable. Um, pretend my rings aren't there, but these are mirror images are not superimposable. And then um, the relationship between my hand is that my hands are enantiomers. So my hand is chiral. This is a chiral hand. And then these two hands together are enantiomers. So these are non-superimposable mirror images. But another way to think of it is um, hands. <laughs> Your hands are a pair of enantiomers. So that's if you have one chiral center. If you have two chiral centers, then you have the potential for more stereoisomers. We talked about how 
the max number of stereoisomers you can have is two to the n. So that's the number of chiral centers. I won't test you on more than two chiral centers, but so if you had two squared, that would be four. Today I said two squared was um, six in class or two to the third was six, but actually two to the third is eight. So I'm not great at math, <laughs> but it's because I never use the two to the third in my day-to-day -day life because I won't test you on it. Okay. So there's four possible stereoisomers, um, and that would be because there's R, R as one, if you have two chiral centers, they, each chiral center can only be R or S. So you could have, um, I'm gonna say A, molecule A could be R, R, molecule B could be um, R, S, molecule C could be S, S, and then molecule D could be S, R. So these would all be potentially different molecules that are all considered stereoisomers of one another. And then if it's RR, those would be enantiomers. And if it would be S, oh, sorry, I put the arrow, RR and SS, so the relationship between A and C, because both of the chiral centers are reflected here, those would be enantiomers. And then between B and D, those would be enantiomers, unless it's a meso compound, which is a very specific case. So that's sort of the relationship here. And then if you pick one of these in the box and pair it with one that's not in the box, so A with B or A with D, C with B or C with D, that relationship is diastereomers. And that's because our stereoisomers are either they're mirror images, they're enantiomers, or if they're not mirror images, they're diastereomers. So we're expanding our diastereomer definition from cis-trans to also include multiple chiral centers that are not mirror images. And so that's why I sometimes call this category everything else. So like an example would be RR paired with SR where this top part of the molecule is a mirror image, but the bottom part of the molecule is the same. So the relationship between these two would also be diastereomers. So that is a, a review quickly of a much longer video that goes over that. So going back to our problem over here, when this question asks you to draw an enantiomer, well, we have RR and SS. So those are mirror images, and I'm confident that they're not superimposable but I can build out the molecule just to show you. I'll pause to save time. Okay, so I've built these molecules. So um, let's see, this one would be our RR. So I've made them, I've rearranged them so that the hydrogens are going back and the bromine's here, CH3 is here and vice versa down here. Um, and then this is the mirror image of that. Maybe I have to rotate it so you can tell. This is the mirror image of that. So you can see these are mirror images. So this is RR, this is SS. And when I try to line them up, I cannot. The hydrogens line up. You can get these two hydrogens to line up, but then the carbons and the um, bromines don't. So these are non superimposable mirror images. Now, if I were to change just one of these chiral centers, so I'm going to just swap out um, the CH3 and the bromine on this bottom one. So I converted the S to R right here. You can now see that these are not in, these are no longer mirror images, hopefully. Uh, because the top, although the top is a mirror image, the bottom is actually not reflected at all. Even if I were to line up this CH3, then the, these are opposite, right? So um, they're no longer mirror images, but are they the same molecule? If I were to try to pick this up and line it up, no, they're not the same molecule. So they, can't, they are still stereoisomers. They are not the same molecule, but they're not enantiomers. So the only other type of stereoisomer we have is diastereomers. So that is how you would draw a diastereomer of the molecule is by 
keeping one carbon group the same. So this is the S enantiomer. And then what I did on the bottom was I um, rotated, I swapped out just the Br and the CH3, and I turned that into the, S, uh, to the R enantiomer. So now here we have the SR enantiomer, or sorry, the SR diastereomer. Okay, so, um, so we have here molecule A is RR, molecule B is SS, molecule C is SR. Now, um, we had talked about earlier how many stereo, so we've checked, we've done that. We've drawn an enantiomer and a diastereomer of the molecule. Now, the next question is how many stereo isomers are there for this molecule? So remember, that's two to the N. So that's four. And so the ones we might have are RR, SS, SR, and then its mirror image, RS. So these are enantiomers, these are enantiomers, and then the relationship across these boxes is diastereomers, right? Um, so here, if we look at the mirror image of this to get RS, it would look like this, CH3, Br, H, and then down here, CH3, Br, H. So this is the mirror image of that. So I'm going to build these molecules. Okay, so here they are. So um, our bromines are on this one or on the left. Our bromines are on the right in this one. So these are the mirror images of, um, this is C and the mirror image of C. But this is a unique case where it has that um, line through the middle of plane of symmetry. So even though these are mirror images, if you line them on top of each other, they do line up. So these are not non-superimposable mirror images. So these are not enantiomers in this case because there's a plane of symmetry. So that is called a meso compound. So C and C. <laughs> C and D are actually both just C. These are the same molecules. So RR, SS, those are enantiomers. SR and RS, in this case, they are meso compound, is the same molecule. So this, uh, for the question, how many stereoisomers are there for this molecule? There are only three. The maximum number would be four. Now, if I had um, this same molecule, so I'll take, oh, I'm out of blank sheets of paper. I'll take this paper. So I'm going to take this same molecule and have H, CH3, CH3, H. And then instead of Br, I'm going to do chlorine because it's still heavy, so the priority shouldn't change. If I took the mirror image of this, so um, this would be SR, and I know that because the priorities don't change. If I took the mirror image of this, I would get CH3, Br, H, CH3, Br, H. So this should be RS. You don't have to take my word for it. You can pause the um, video and see, count, count them out for yourself. Um, so if I take these, and um, I'm going to swap out, let's see, I changed the bromine out for a, uh, the bromine out for a chlorine. So I'm going to make chlorine purple. And then on this one, um, this is the mirror image, and I'm swapped. Oh, I forgot to change it to chlorine. I swapped the bottom bromine out for chlorine. So this is the mirror image of these. Now if I rotate it and try to superimpose them, I cannot. So this molecule has um, two chiral centers. So it has two to the end max stereoisomers. So that's two squared. So that's four stereoisomers. And those stereoisomers are SR, RS, and then um, SS. So SS would look like this. 
I'm just going to interchange two groups at the top to get SS. You can practice these on your own just to see how I got those. And then if I reflect this across, we'd get CL here, CH3 here, H here. So that's R and uh, CH3 here, BR here, H here. So that's R as well. So these four are the four possible uh, stereoisomers. We have SS, RR, RS, and SR. But for SR and RS, if the same three things are attached, basically if there's a plane of symmetry, so like if that's what real mean, you have to check to see if there is a plane of symmetry. And if there is, then these molecules would be the same. But that's not our case here. These are different molecules. There's no plane of symmetry. So there are, in fact, four stereoisomers. And between these two, these would be enantiomers. The relationship between these two molecules is enantiomers. And the relationship between these two molecules is what? Hopefully you said diastereomers. The relationship between these two molecules is what? It's like Dora. <laughs> Hopefully you said diastereomers here too, but then the relationship between these two is enantiomers. So hopully that clears that up for you. That is all I wanted you to get out of um, question A, uh, question two, part A, D, and E. That's what I was hoping for. And then I thought it would be good for you to practice going from um, Fisher to the name. But I realized that that was maybe adding a little too much in. Hang on, let me get another piece of paper. So, and I typically actually don't do that because it's kind of hard uh, to go from Fisher to the sawhorse. I'm going to show you how uh, I would do it, go from Fisher to sawhorse. And then I'm going to show you how I'd approach this if I didn't have a modeling kit. Okay, so this molecule... Originally, we drew in Fisher projection like this, right? We did um, the CH3 here and the CH3 here, and uh, we did, see, it's RR, because the question is then draw the sawhorse configuration of the molecule. So that's RR. So for RR, I'm just going to start over because it's too hard for me to do it this way. I think the BR was here and the BR was here, but let's double check. So this is one, two, and three. That's S, but the hydrogen's coming straight towards me, so actually it's R. And then this is one, two, and three. So that's S, but the hydrogen's coming straight towards me, so it's actually it's R. So if you don't understand why this is RR, uh, go back and watch the last part because I went over how I got that. Or pause it and uh, do it your way and see if your way you're getting the right answer. So this is the RR configuration, but we're viewing it in sawhorse. And I put the CH3s on the top because those are easiest for me to see. If we're viewing it in sawhorse, it would look like this, right? These two are going away from us and these are pointed up. So the base backbone of carbon looks like this instead of what you're used to seeing. Um, so if we draw it, oh wait, I, this is the wrong configuration. This is the R, R configuration. Okay, I forgot to change it out. So this is what you're seeing, right? Bromine on the left, bromine on the right here. So if you turn it on its side, which is how we typically view a sawhorse, where this is in the plane of the page, these th four carbons make this kind of weird, um, like, in shape instead of the typical zigzag that we're used to seeing. So both of these carbons are pointing up, which means both of their wedges and dashes have to point up. So it would look like this. 
but that's not really the proper sawhorse. And in fact, the question specifically asks for you to draw the sawhorse with the wedge dash pointing up on one carbon and down on the other. So we have to draw it like this. So the carbon on the left is fine to stay the way that it did, or I just picked one arbitrarily, but the other carbon has to rotate. And it has to rotate all the way around. Um, and then our chlorine, oh, I switched these to chlorine, but these were bromines, I'm sorry. Then our bromines would both be pointing towards us and the hydrogen would be pointing away. And so I just showed you how that happened on here. But if you didn't have the model, honestly, what I would do is I would, uh, just to get these kind of in the plane that we're used to seeing, is I would do like a half rotation and make this hydrogen go straight up. This bromine become a wedge pointing or a dash pointing down and the CH3 become a, a dash pointing forward. So basically your hydrogen would be up here. This side doesn't change. Your um, bromine would be a dash down and your CH3 would be a dash out. So that's a little bit more like what you're used to seeing. And then you can just rotate it uh, further if you want, where you can um, basically put your CH3 here, your hydrogen here, and your bromine there to get your bromine on the wedge, your CH3 would be here, hydrogen would be going dash into the page, and then your bromine would be coming out. So this is the um, RR23-dibromobutane drawn in sawhorse projection from the fissure. However, if I were uh, to be doing this on an exam and it said draw the sawhorse configuration of the molecule with the wedge dash pointing up and down, I would actually probably just start fresh and I would just say, okay, so this is one, two, three, four butane, one, two. Uh, so, um, and I'm just gonna arbitrarily put my bromos on wedges just so that the hydrogen's going into the plane of the page so it's easier to assign R and S configuration or absolute configuration. And then I would just say, this is one, two, three. Okay, so um, this is going to the right and hydrogen's faced away from me. So this is R and then same thing here, one, two, three. This is going to the right and hydrogen's facing away from me. So this is also R. So that's how I would approach that question. You can do it either way, but I think there is very likely to be, for my students at least, a question that is saying like, um, here's a Fisher projection of something. What's this, the proper sawhorse that goes with it? So you should be able to, if you just name it based on the fissure and then draw the sawhorse, that's fine. You can do that. Um, but you should sort of be able to uh, understand the relationship between these two. And specifically how if these are on opposite sides, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be on opposite sides on this. Okay. Sorry, I'm so thirsty. Just been talking for an hour solid. All right. So then for part C, it asks for the Newman projection of the molecule. So, uh, well, I already have the Newman projection drawn out or the um, sawhorse projection drawn out. So it's easiest for me to um, look from this way. So if I'm looking from this way, we have bromine on the left, hydrogen on the right, and the CH3 going straight up. And if that's hard for you to visualize, let's see, let's get it. This is how we're used to seeing it. This is uh, it's the same molecule. So all I'm doing is rotating it like this. So the CH3 is going straight up, bromine on the left, hydrogen on the right. Um, but typically I just imagine myself as a person standing like right here. So the right in front of me, the uh, CH3 is going straight up and the bromine's on the left and the um, hydrogen's on the right. If you draw it from the opposite side, your um, things that are pointing out at you would be on, let's see, this way they'd be on the left, this way they'd be on the right. So I think maybe um, you've heard like, oh, I just always do wedges on the left and dashes on the right. And that'll probably get you partial credit, but it's not always right. So you should be comfortable drawing this from either direction. So if you drew it from this direction, and so you're like, oh, I didn't get the same thing that she got. 
if you do it from this direction, then um, I encourage you to try drawing it from the other direction and see if you get the right answer. And same thing, we can draw it from this side as practice if we want. Okay, so this has to be the front carbon has to have the lines going all the way through. I saw a few people who then the back carbon, the lines went all the way through, but the back carbon should not. The back carbon, the line should stop at the back circle. Um, and what's nice is once you've figured out which side the wedges are, they'll stay on the same side. You just can't always say left or right. So because this bromine was a wedge and it was on my left, this bromine is also on my left because it's a wedge. So this is the molecule looking from this carbon back. The other molecule, or the other side, if we're looking from this side, um, it would be the... Uh, it points up. So the CH3 is going down. And then your bromine's here and your hydrogen's here. And then to circle the back carbon, your CH3 is pointed straight up and your hydrogen here and your bromine here. So if you just took the mirror image of this, it wouldn't be the same molecule. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was off the page. Ah, my new camera. I'm not used to it yet. Okay. So if you just took the mirror image of this, it wouldn't be the same molecule. It would be the enantiomer. Notice how if I looked at it from right to left, my little Y points down. But if I look at it from left to right, my little Y points up. So that matters. The bromines are on the opposite side. Oh, this bromine should be down here. Sorry. And this hydrogen here. The bromines are on the opposite side and the hydrogens on their op opposite side, but then the CH3s have moved too. So this isn't the enantiomer, this is looking at it from the opposite side. But if I was to look at it from this side, the Y, like the CH3 part that's pointing up is different. So that matters. It matters where you draw, which side you're drawing from, where your um, orientation is to retain stereochemistry. Okay, so then, um, my last question here is, um, oh, it's in the least stable. So the least stable, assume bromine is larger than CH3. So if bromine is larger than CH3, then um, the bromines lining up would be the least stable. So I'm gonna rotate the front molecule to where um, everything is eclipsed. So, and our back molecule stays the same, BrHCH3. But our front molecule now looks like this. So our bromines are on top of each other. This was a CH3, so it stays the same. And then down here um, is hydrogen. So this is the molecule in the least stable configuration. OK. Um, also on this, I forgot to say, if you're looking at it from the other direction, which carbon is in front switches? So if you just did the mirror image of this and you didn't change which carbon was in front when you move these to the other side, that's why they're not the same. So that's kind of important. Okay, so this was everything I kind of wanted you to get out of this question. So I hope that was more helpful. And I hope now you would be able to do all these parts um, in a way that is feels less overwhelming to you. I'm gonna stop there um, and what I'll do well, I'm probably going to work these out anyway, so I guess I'll just keep talking. This is just a really long video, so um, sorry for my long video, but hopefully this is a helpful review to you. Okay, so for this molecule below, I am supposed to find the chiral centers. So there's a chiral center here, here, and here. And um, the way I know that, sorry, I just like went right for it, is um, I'm immediately eliminating this because there's a CH3, so it can't have four different groups. Chiral centers are sp3 hybrid carbons, and they have four different groups on them. Okay, and so uh, they have four different groups. So this has two hydrogens, so it can't be this. And for the um, this class, for my class, carbon is the only one you have to worry about. Technically, there are other heteroatoms that can, but for right now, I'm not having my students worry about that. So all of these are not sp3, or in this case, they have two of the same groups attached, two hydrogens or three hydrogens. 
So I'm eliminating all those. This is sp3, but it has two hydrogens, so I'm getting rid of that. This is sp2, this is sp3, so I'm getting rid of all these. None of these nitrogens can be because we don't care about heteroatoms or this oxygen. So this carbon, this does have three things attached, but um, there's a plane of symmetry right through the middle that those ethyl groups are the same. So this is not it. And then these two CH2s and CH3s, all those are wrong. Okay, so that's how I arrived at my conclusion that they, these are the only viable options. Now you can just double check if you want um, that there are four different groups. I probably would if it was on the exam. So this is what I'm looking at, this chiral center. So if I look to its left, um, there's a carbon. Here there's a nitrogen. Here there's a carbon. And then there's an implied hydrogen. So two carbons and a nitrogen. Nitrogen, hydrogen, totally different. These two carbons we need to look at. Even though these are both carbons, they count as different groups if the thing they're attached to is different. So this carbon has two hydrogens, while this has a hydrogen and a nitrogen. So this carbon is different than this carbon. So that is for sure a chiral center we've double checked. Now I would do the same thing here. I'm gonna go faster, but there's a nitrogen, a carbon, a carbon, and an implied hydrogen right here. Um, that's four different things except for these two carbons, but this carbon is attached to nitrogen and this one's attached to an oxygen. So we're good on that one. That one's a chiral center. And then right here, we have um, carbon, carbon, oxygen with an implied hydrogen. So those two carbons are the same, but this carbon is bonded twice to this carbon and this carbon is bonded to a nitrogen. So that's a chiral center. Okay. So um, I'm unlikely to make you do three chiral centers on one molecule on an exam, but I just thought this would be a good one for practice. So um, <clears throat> we'll start with this one right here. So I'm going to redraw it just so that it's easier to see. But I'm just going to draw the molecule, like the area of interest right here. And hopefully in just this amount, I'm able to... Um, I'd be able to assign the priority. So um, carbon is gonna be the lowest priority at four, and oxygen is gonna be the highest priority at one. Now we're torn between these two carbons. Well, this carbon, it's a double bond, uh, so we pretend like there's two carbons there, so it's bonded to two carbons. This carbon is bonded to a nitrogen. So the nitrogen beats out the carbons. So this is two, and this is three. So we can do one of two things. We can flip this whole molecule over so that the hydrogen is pointing away from us. Or we can know that because the hydrogen is pointing directly towards us, that whatever we get for the configuration is the opposite. So I'm going to do um, the second one. <laughs> one, two, and three. So we're going to the left, so that's S, but the hydrogen coming directly towards us means that actually it's R. And if you want to see what it would look like, I mean, this is a huge molecule, so rewriting the whole thing is really hard. So this is why a lot of times organic chemists don't do it. But um, if we flipped this whole thing over, the oxygen would look like this and the hydrogen would look like this. And then the nitrogen down here. So then we would have priority one, two, three. And you can see there how it's R. So now you know. So now you can trust me. Um, but I, so I don't flip the whole mo molecule over because that's just hard to do every time. So now on this one, we have nitrogen here and then two carbons. So between these two carbons, um, this one is bonded to the oxygen and this one's bonded to the nitrogen. While well, oxygen is, uh, weighs, I think, 16 and nitrogen weighs less than that. C-N-O-F, yeah, less than that. So... Nitrogen, um, uh, which one was that on? Right here. So we had two carbons. Carbon bonded to the oxygen is uh, oxygen's higher weight than a carbon bonded to the nitrogen. So this would be two. And then this would be three. And our hydrogen's already going into the plane of the page. So our second chiral center right there is R. Right? One, two, three, R. So this one was R. And this one is R. And now we'll do the bottom one. It gets kind of hard to see, so make sure like you very clearly label if you're doing this on a quiz or a test. 
Um, we're looking at this carbon, so this nitrogen would be priority one. It's heavier than carbon, and then we have our two carbons here. This carbon is bonded to a nitrogen, but these are just hydrogens. So this would be priority two, and this would be priority three. So one, two, three. That's going to the right, but the hydrogen is coming straight out me, so it's actually S. So this would be uh, R, R, and S for our final configurations. And if you want to practice more on those, you can look up molecules that are like any pharmaceutical, really, and try to assign the priority and then look it up and it'll um, you'll be able to do that. So that's a way that you can practice without needing like formal practice problems. OK, now this next question um, is cis trans isomerism. What is the IUPAC name of the following substance? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the parent chain here is cyclohexane. Um, I could either number one, two, three, or one, two, three. Alkane and alkyl, sorry, halides and alkanes are the same priority. So that doesn't decide. So then I'll just go with bromo being lower because B comes before M in the alphabet. So one bromo and three methyl. So we'd have one bromo, three methyl cyclohexane. But we have to put cis or trans before. And so this is pointing up and this is pointing down. So this is trans. Um, but something that I've shown people before is um, you know, if you have your ring and all of these are pointing towards you, they alternate axial, equatorial, axial, equatorial, axial, equatorial, axial, equatorial, axial, equatorial. Um, so if this is axial on one and three is equatorial, then it would have to be the dash. So that's another way that you can see it, whichever you want to do. Okay. Um, Draw the molecule in sawhorse configuration. Well, that just means, what I mean by that is just in flat, you know, with the wedges and dashes. So um, luckily I kind of already did that. So I'll have my bromine going up and my CH3 going down. If you can just look at that and see the CH3 going down, that's great. If you need to do this, that's great too. Um, okay, and then we're supposed to draw a diastereomer of this molecule. So diastereomers, cis-trans are diastereomers. So this one hopefully is a little bit more intuitive for you as we have Br and CH3 both pointing up. These are not mirror images, but they're still not the same molecule. So the relationship between these two is diastereomers. Does the molecule have an enantiomer? Well, um, there are two chiral centers where there's four different things attached. Because if you look at this, there's um, an applied hydrogen, a bromine, and then we have CH2, and then the next thing is CHCH3, and this over here is CH2. So there are two chiral centers. Um, so technically, let's see. If we were to draw a mirror image or like cut this in half, it would not reflect the same thing across. We'd have bromine on one side and CH3 on the other. So yes, this molecule does have an enantiomer or if it means this one right here, it's actually the same thing. Uh, we have Br pointing up and CH3 pointing down. This can kind of be hard to see. So let me just, I'm not gonna draw it. I'm not gonna do it in cyclo hexane because I already have these other ones made, but I will do it in cyclobutane. Um, and you'll be able to basically see the same concept. So if I have a I have a Br pointing up and a CH3 pointing down here. If I cut this molecule in half, it would not reflect the same thing back in the mirror. Uh, but if I have um, a Br and a CH3, 
Same thing with this one. If I have a Br coming towards me and a CH3 coming towards me and I cut it in half, it won't display the same thing back in the mirror. So um, this does have an enantiomer. And so does this uh, because there's not a plane of symmetry. So let's get the mirror images of these. And these, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things to visualize uh, because it can be displayed a lot of different ways, um, like on tests and stuff. So you can have the uh, symmetry, the mirror images, if they're like reflected like this. Mm, oh, I'm short. ACH3. No, I'm not. That was right. Okay. If they're reflected like this, they are not superimposable if you try to put them over on top of each other. Uh, but sometimes they can also be reflected like this, like sort of on top of each other. And then they're drawn like this side by side. So it can be hard to see. So you'll just have to practice with those. Um, but yes, so this molecule does have an enantiomer. So I wanted you to practice being able to convert from this form to this form and practicing the relationship between molecules here as well. Okay, um, the next molecule is asking if the double bond with the arrow here is cis or trans. That doesn't really matter for rings, only isolated double bonds like this one. So I'm gonna look at the hydrogens. And remember these are sp3 hybridized, so that's always why I draw the hydrogen away from the point of the carbon, is because that's like the direction they go. sp3 hybridized molecules are this angle. So uh, right here, the hydrogens, if I draw a line right down the middle, the hydrogens are on opposite sides. So this is trans. Um, I was going to see if there's a chiral center here. And I don't. Yep, there's some right here. <clears throat> I didn't ask. But I meant to ask or additional practice you can do is um, naming those if there are or s and i think this is like some kind of allergy medicine i don't know what it is um but you can practice and get with your friends and see if they get the same thing okay um this next question hydrogenation uh, basically just saturates these double bonds so uh you just add a hydrogen here and here on the same side um, and get rid of the electrons right there so this is what you end up with um, okay, the next one, what is the relationship between two molecules? These two molecules, the two molecules. And that was what I meant is like, this is a mirror image. So the first one has, um, the two things pointing towards us. It's kind of confusing because they're not like, hang on, I'll build it. Okay, so this is kind of just an example. It's not like exactly right, but so the first one, um, when I'm looking at this, I see the um, OH and the NH3 pointing towards me, so, uh, or the NH pointing towards me, so purple and green are pointing towards me. And then in the other one, Purple and green would be pointing away from me, but the rest of the molecule is the same. So I didn't take the time to build the whole molecule, but this little part is the aromatic ring, and this part is the CH3, okay? So um, this is what they've given you, two pointing towards you and two pointing away from you. So this is what I mean about sometimes the reflection is weird because they've actually reflected these two molecules across this line. I don't know if you can see it, but almost in the plane of the page. Um, another way that you can see it is the reflection of the molecule. If you flip this whole thing over, you would get the aromatic ring on this side. If you flip this whole molecule over, the OH here, then the NH with the methyl here. Um, so, because I said the OH is this purple part, so this is what they give you. And you have to be able to see that if I took this whole molecule and flipped it over, it would look like this, which is a mirror image of the first one. Um, 
but it's also you can think of the mirror image being sort of in the plane of the page just like this so that's a trickier one if you want more practice like that i did um, for my class i put up some more practice problems with just an answer key not a video key that you can work on okay um so oh wait did i finish that question let's see so the relationship between these two molecules these are enantiomers because they are mirror images and they're not superimposable um and then the next question is uh draw an additional stereoisomer so that would just be turning one of these from a wedge into a dash so that would be an additional stereoisomer of them or you could do it to the alcohol either one and remember, there's a potential for, uh, you know, four different ones. So you can identify all of them by doing R, R, S, S, R, S, and S, R, where you get the alcohol and nitrogen, each one to be R, both of them to be S, one R, one S, and flip them. That's how you can find all the possible molecules and the relationship between them, all the possible stereoisomers of this molecule. Okay. Um, so now the next question, this is another one of those tricky ones where you're trying to um, be able to visualize uh, sort of the, this molecule in a bunch of different ways. So, okay, um, it's a relationship to each of the four of them. So this is staying on the same side, but this is becoming a dash and this is becoming a wedge. So this is an enantiomer. And the way I saw that is if I flip this whole molecule over, if I flip this over, what is pointing towards me here, so the alcohol that's pointing towards me on the right, if I flip it over, goes into pointing away from me. So it would look like this. And this molecule would, uh, the one that's pointing away from me here, if I flipped it over, it would be pointing up. So it look like this. So the relationship between those are enantiomers. Um, and this is, ve this is very similar to this one uh, that we already did. So if you need a modeling kit, you can um, build it out. But basically, we have um, a ring with no plane of symmetry. And on this, one, on this side, we have um, the hydrogen pointing towards us. And on the other side, the hydrogen is going away from us. Building these real quick. Um, it's very similar, so you just have to practice seeing this, but um, basically this is what we have, where the OH is going away from us here and it's coming towards us here. And if I take this and flip it over, even if these were both purple, instead of them being purple and green, they still don't line up. So, um, and they are mirror images, which you can see when I line it up sort of like this. So this is very similar. This is something I struggled with a lot when I was a student. So uh, you should definitely practice that if you're not feeling confident about it. And um, this one's a little bit easier. These is a wedge and a dash. These are both dashes. So these are diastereomers because, um, this is the cis version and this is trans. Um, this molecule, is, both of these, ha, this is tricksy. Um, this is not even an enantiomer because, or sorry, not, not an isomer. These are totally different molecules. Um, you'd say not isomeric uh, because you, have a different number of hydrogens. So carbon, 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 carbon here, all each with two implied hydrogens, one implied hydrogen, one implied hydrogen, um, no implied hydrogens here. Oh, it might be a constitutional isomers. Now I have to count it up. Let's count up the number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in our original. One, two, three, four. So four carbons. Um, and then here, one, two, three, four carbons, okay? And then hydrogens, we have one, two, three, four, four hydrogens. Oh, wait, five and six in our alcohol, six hydrogens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Is that right? Yeah, so we added in basically a hydrogen here and here, yeah. So um, these are not, they're not isomeric. I was right originally. These are not isomeric. They're different molecules. So sometimes it'll be like they're not isomeric. They're the same molecule, like an amizo, but this is not isomeric, totally different molecules. And I think this one ends up being probably the same way. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So we know we have uh, four carbons and six hydrogens over here. So we have one, two, three, four carbons here. And uh, one, two, three, four hydrogens, and that's it. Because uh, this double bond takes away our implied hydrogens, or there'd be five bonds there. So these are. this is also not isomeric different molecules. Okay, um, the next one, nomenclature. We've done this before a lot of different places, so um, I'm not going to do this one again. Uh, you've done that before for sure. Um, you can check out my recitation video because it's definitely there, so I'm not going to do that. And then um, the next question I think is the last one. Draw the most stable conformation of cis-1, oh, you can't even see that. Sorry, I'm not used to this new camera. Cis-1, tert-butyl-2, fluoro, what? Cis-1, tert-butyl-2, fluorocyclohexane. So, cyclohexane, um, cis, so they're both wedges, tert-butyl-2, fluoro. Okay, cyclohexane. Um, so when it's saying most stable, that would be chair confirmation. So this is my chair confirmation. Um, I'm going to make this one be equatorial up. And I'm going to make this one be, it would have to be axial up. And um, the way you can remember that is if this one's axial, this one's equatorial, this one's axial. Um, so I just picked equatorial and axial. And I picked my tert butyl group to be equatorial and my, um, my uh, fluoro group to be axial because tert butyl is bigger. So the bigger group needs to be equatorial, so that needs to be more stable. So if you're not comfortable converting between this and this, that's something for sure to practice on. Okay, um, so now the last one for the molecule, butane, draw the Newman projection. This is nice because it's not a chiral molecule, so we just need to know that there's a CH3 group on the front and a CH3 group on the back, because that's one carbon, this is one carbon, this is one carbon, that's one carbon. Um, I'm kind of speeding through this just because it's already a one and a half hour video and um, my voice is tired and my husband's waiting for me at home. So, um, but it, it's the molecule looks like this and then, you know, the hydrogens here and here. So hopefully you can see that. If not, you can go back to some of my other videos where we spend more time on Newman projections. Um, but this is, you should also know the names of each of these. I didn't include this, but you should. Um, so this where the two biggest groups are opposite each other, this is called anti-staggered. Anytime they're not directly on top of each other, it's staggered. And then um, if we then have the two biggest groups near each other, so well, I guess I'll just rotate this. So um, if the CH3 moves here, it would be eclipsed. Uh, let's see. CH3 here, H here, and what's the other H? Let's see, CH3. Let me redo this. I'm going to leave the front one the same. I always say I'm going to move the back one, but then moving the front one is way harder for me. Okay, so uh, if we line all these groups up, this would be eclipsed, right? So this is eclipsed, um, but uh, then there's also gauche where if the two um, biggest groups are really close to each other, CH3, and then you have your CH3 back here, and then all the rest of these are hydrogens. This is um, staggered gauche. 
And then if you have your two biggest groups directly on top of each other, so your CH3 here, your hydrogen here, hydrogen here, then this is, um, this is eclipse and this is the least stable eclipse. I don't know if I spelled that right. Oh man, that was off the um, video. So this one is the least stable right here. So um, you should know all the names of these, the eclipse, to gauche, staggered, and you should be able to place them on an energy diagram. I'm not going to do that for this because I um, have done this exact molecule in a recitation packet before, but the most stable projection is this one. So um, that's the answer to that. And we're right at an hour and a half, so um, that is your review for today that I thought you'd have in class. And hopefully this is a little bit more clear for you and starts at some more of the basics and then builds. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do this uh, review better or more clear, but hopefully that will be helpful to you and help you feel okay going into the exam tomorrow. Um, I hope it didn't make you feel worse, at least. Um, maybe just identified some things that you need to work on more or that you don't have a great understanding of. So um, good luck studying, and I'll see you tomorrow.